Hey car gang, the good news is the chassis modifications are almost done. So let me show you what I have planned. Garage time. Okay, here's where we're at on all the modifications. The rear coilover gussets, done. The front shock tower top plates are done. The uh, front strut brace brackets, those are done. The front anti-roll bar strengthening plates, done. Then there's the rear coilover cross member under plates. So these two go hand in hand. I strengthen the top using gussets and there's some vulnerable areas on the bottom and I'm going to be um, cleaning that up and putting some plates on. So that is a job for today. The rear torsion tube to body plates, there's some plates that the RSR used back in the day and uh, I'm gonna put those in, those should be relatively easy. And then the rear anti-roll bar mounts um, there's an upgrade to put on those so that they don't tear. That's another common problem, probably even more so than the front anti-roll bar plates. I'm going to do my best to finish all three, five, six, and seven in the next few days. Hey guys, I'm about to take you underneath the car for the first time. Now I have it on the, um, the tire stands and you know some extra jack stands underneath. Let me show you what I did. So the, the rear tires are strapped down with these heavy, uh, heavy straps. And you know, I can, um, I can shake the car as hard as I want and uh, things are pretty stable. I do have some extra jack stands underneath here, although they aren't even touching because they don't go high enough. But if the car were to fall, you know, it would give me a little extra space to try to get out. But uh, I'm pretty confident to go underneath. And then I have this, uh, this mechanics creeper I'm just going to lay down and take you guys underneath. So let's go. So you have this frame rail and then, and then this cross member. And with all the coilover pressure coming up this area here, it may um, want to crack back here. So I'll do some extra plates back here and some extra seam welding on the bottom to try to prevent this cross member from coming detached from the frame rail. Um, to get started, I'm gonna remove these heater valves. They're all rusty anyways. Job number, number two, or I can't remember which number it was on the list, five, six, or seven, is to reinforce the torsion bar. So you can see where the suspension arms or the trailing arms attached to the rear torsion bar. So as you're, you're making a corner, there's a tremendous amount of force coming this way, which gets translated along the bar, which tends to take this torsion tube and push it into the car. So the, the goal and what they did in the, in the previous race cars is to tie this torsion tube to the actual body using some plates. So it's just a simple plate it just goes from this attachment here on the torsion bar up to the body and it strengthens things a little bit. Item number seven is to strengthen underneath here. So this is the rear sway bar bracket. Here's the factory fuel pump and there's a large piece that 1974 had, um, which some of the early cars didn't, but I'm gonna leave the bracket here. But uh, my, my sway bar um, pieces are in pretty good shape, but these are really thin metal. This is. It's a little bit bent right now, so I'm gonna straighten it, but this is probably, I'll measure this. This is, I wanna say um, 18 gauge. And just by design, it just has a tendency to tear or break either here or up here. So the idea is, you know, rather than replace it with an aftermarket one, is to box this in, um, adding some extra nuts to the back, box it in, and possibly tie it onto this bracket here because this is already much, much stronger. Um, the fuel pump bracket, oddly enough, is way stronger than the sway bar bracket just by looking at the shape and also the sheet metal thickness. This is thicker than this. The passenger side is, in my car, it's in okay shape. It's got, it's got a couple dents right here. It's kind of caved in a little bit. So I'm gonna straighten it out the best I can. 
but the goal is to uh, make a plate that not only boxes this all in, but actually ties it to the torsion bar. So it's gonna go from here up to here. So now the torsion mounts will be in double shear. It's attached to the frame rail right here, but this edge, which is sort of cantilevered in open space, is gonna get tied up to here. So it'll be much, much stronger. And I'm gonna make those parts myself, of course. All right, this is uh, now off. wasn't uh, wasn't easy to get off. I, I really tried hard not to break the studs on the on the uh, on the car, and I managed to get it off. I had to use you know a little bit of heat and a wire brush and more penetrating oil, but they did work free. Took about at least a half an hour to get this side. I'm <clears throat> I'm gonna let the other side soak a little longer in the penetrating oil and try to work it off. I got one of the nuts off, but I got two more that are really tough. So I do not want to break anything on the car, but uh, this is as bad as it looks. This um, valve, um, you know, still works uh, pretty well. So I'll clean these up later on. Not a big hurry right now. Okay, I'm back here under the car and I got that other heater valve off. No problem. All the uh, studs and nuts are in good shape. And I've also cleaned off the undercoating in the sections that need to be welded. So you can see that the factory, maybe you can't see it, but the factory did a seam weld along this edge, which is great. And then there's a couple spot welds here, spot welded all along the frame rail there. So the idea that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish seam welding all the way to the bottom, close this out, and then put this plate over the edge. Now this, here's a template. So it's just a just an angle piece. It's gonna, it's gonna have another seam weld behind the factory seam weld. And then these are gonna fold underneath like that. This is gonna fold underneath there like that. Tie it in. And then back here, this is where the torsion bar meets the seat pins. And you can see I uh, cleaned out some sections there of the undercoating. And I'm going to be bridging the suspension arm mounts right to the seat pan area. go kind of like that. So it's going to really just tie those two together. Yeah, so that's just a simple kind of rectangular square. It's got a couple little angles to it, but you know, nothing too crazy. I've also cleaned off some areas on the anti-roll bar. Now, I'm going to be tying it in to the torsion bar. If you can see on the top there, I've uh, taken the, uh, a little bit of the undercoating there off. So the idea is to go directly from this weak flange on the bottom directly to the torsion bar. So I have a template. It's not 100% flushed out, but it's gonna be doing this. So it's gonna box in this anti-roll bar mount. It's gonna go all the way up to the torsion bar, and then these ears are gonna fold over to complete the box. Okay, the other weak point on this suspension, suspension um, anti-roll bar mount are these nuts back here. So. I'm going to be using some hardware like this. This is the wrong size. This is just what I had in my toolbox. I'm gonna to get the right size hardware and it's gonna go on top of here and connect into this rolled section or this uh, bent section. So if it can bridge that gap and I'll weld it on here, weld it on the bottom so we'll have additional threads in the event that the threads do pull out, um, it'll have extra strength on that. Plus this connecting from bottom to top is going to stiffen it even more. So I'm gonna do the nut modification first and then, and then box it in. Okay, on this side, I did take the fuel pump out and this bracket here is, is pretty strong and it's already welded to the frame rail um, in a couple different places. So this looks okay. Um, it does have a um, open seam right here. So I'll probably TIG weld that shut on both sides just to give it a little extra strength. And then rather than going from here up to the torsion bar it'd be redundant, it's just gonna go from here to this bracket. Wish me luck. Yeah, I'm not filming as much today because so much of it's under the car and it's difficult as it is to work underneath there, let alone filming it. So um, it's a lot of the same type of work that uh, I have been doing. It's, it's just a little harder to film. I'm gonna show you this part. This is the um, bracket that's gonna go on that rear cross member um, and that's gonna tie it into the frame rail and I showed you the template. This is just the piece cut out on my plasma cutter. I'm using 14 gauge for this material. I used a little bit thicker. I used eighth inch thick for those um, suspension trailing arm attachment points, 
where they um, gusset up to the body. That was, uh, that was a little thicker. I think there's more force on that one. So anyways, I just wanted to show you this. This is gonna get bent um, underneath on the car. Once I get these edges welded in, I'm gonna you know, conform it to the car just like I did on the uh, upper gussets for the strut tower. I'm wearing a lot more clothes than I usually do. I got um, three shirts on. I got some heavy jeans and some um, extra big socks because you know, MIG welding, I think MIG welding sucks anyways, but it really sucks when you're welding upside down. There's like a shower of sparks everywhere. So I'm wearing a towel over my helmet and all kinds of stuff. It's uh, very dirty work today, which is why I wanted to get this done before I really start doing more body work, okay? Well, I'm glad that's over. I'm a total mess. It's been a long day, but the good news is the car looks good. So uh, let me take you down there and show you. Um, I'm sorry I didn't have a lot of fabrication shots, a lot of uh, you know my typical video. Um, if you're interested in some of the fabrication, um, take a look at the uh, video where I made the rear coilover gussets. It's a lot of the same fabrication techniques. You know, it's it's cardboard template. It's cut it out with the plasma cutter, tin snips, trim to fit, trim to fit, trim to fit, weld it in. So if you're a regular to this channel, you're probably pretty accustomed to that. So I didn't really film a lot of that, that on this time. But if you are interested, please check that video right here. And uh, let's go under the car and I'll show you how it looks. Okay, first up, you can see these, um, these plates that attach the torsion tube to the seat pans. And so they're, they're pretty simple rectangles, um, not exactly rectangles, but close enough. They do have a curve to them as they follow this bracket um, underneath there. So the idea with this is, uh, you know, to really take the load from the transmission and engine and uh, bolster it up a little bit with the seat pans and then also the cornering loads due to these trailing arms. There can be a lot of, of cornering forces that try to bend this torsion tube. Sometimes the torsion tube tears. Um, I'm hoping that uh, mine never tears and I'm hoping that these plates or gussets will improve it just a little bit. Okay, next up is this plate right here. So it's, a, it's an L bracket basically with some, some tabs that fold underneath and it's, you know, it's welded all the way around. So this is where the coilover goes. This is a temporary bar just holding up the car. Um, but the coilover goes inside there and all the forces that try to rip this cross member away from the frame rail are going to be supported by the gussets on top and then this plate here on the back side. So if this tries to twist or anything, it's going to be prevented by this extra bracket. Right where the um, cross member attaches the frame rail, there's some seam welds there. Okay, and same exact thing for the other side. So you're looking at where the heater can was removed. You can see the, uh, the welds on both the frame rail and the cross member. It's a continuous weld. I did leave the top open for my um, technique where I fill it up with epoxy primer and um, cavity wax. You can see I, um, I seam welded along this uh, bottom edge as well. A little hard to tell here. I did have to touch this up with my TIG welder because there was some porosity there. So anytime there's porosity, I just grind it out and uh, you know, fill up that hole with my, with my TIG welder. Okay, now this one is where the sway bar attaches. So I left one of the bolts in. Here's the other hole right here. This is the factory bracket, but I boxed it in with this plate. So the plate wraps around the corner. It ties into the existing factory bracket here on the sides. Then it has a flange all the way up till it meets the torsion bar. This is the torsion bar, and then it's welded right here. And then on the back side, it's uh, the same thing. It's got a little flange to it. It ties into the factory piece. It is completely um, you know, boxed in and supported at the top. So I also um, filled in the threads from top to bottom with a um, spacer nut. The chance of this bolt pulling out is, is small. And then the, uh, the chance of, of tearing this off of the frame rail is also pretty small because now it's tied to the torsion bar. Um, so no more cam levered thin sheet metal. Um, I used a pretty thick metal here. This is, um, I believe it's 14 gauge. 
So uh, I'm happy with this. I like this a little bit better than the Elephant Racing one. Um, a, because it's homemade, and, and B, um, it, it, doesn't, it takes some of the stress off the frame rail. So now the stress is shared between the frame rail and the torsion bar. Um, so it's less likely just to rip the uh, thing right out of the frame rail. Okay, this is the uh, driver's side, and this one's a little different because there's the fuel pump bracket right here. And I took the fuel pump out, but the fuel pump bracket, even though I'm probably not going to use a stock fuel pump, I just left it in here. Um, who knows what uh, fuel pump I might use, and so I just left it stock. Um, but this is the same idea. This plate here was added. It uh, boxes in the factory bracket. It's welded along the sides where it contacts the factory bracket. There's the, the spacer nuts or barrel nuts inside, and so there's, the threads are synced up with a bolt. Um, it was welded with the, with the bolt in place so I can back this out. Threads will be perfect. It's welded all the way along the edge here. Um, I have a little, a little step here, a little flange to keep this plate as close as possible to the nuts to take the force and translate it up here to what's effectively um, attaching it to the same spot of the torsion bar. It's just via this bracket here that the factory put in. So just so happens this bracket's pretty strong. So I, I, uh, I went up a little higher than I probably needed to. I could have just gone right from here to here, but I wanted to keep it the same as the other side. So it goes up, there's a, there's a 90 degree bend, it comes over, and then I welded um, on the inside here. Here's another view of uh, this side of that anti-roll bar bracket. Okay, so that job makes sanding look like a walk in the park, and sanding is. This was a, a big milestone for me. I just wanted to get through some of this dirty, messy work and uh, you know, mentally kind of check out of that and then back into sanding. Although, I forgot one thing. Okay, so if you remember back to the suspension pan, um, when I was attaching the suspension pan, I didn't weld it in the very front. Because there's a front oil cooler duct, um, I am going to be fabricating the duct work that is going to allow the air to go through the oil cooler, um, kind of into the uh, spare tire area and then out underneath the car. That is a, uh, a pretty big job that um, I will tackle soon, but after I do some body work. And then number nine is another welding project. Um, don't think the welding's over. Uh, this is the, uh, the rear roll cage. Now the real roll cage, rear roll cage is, um, I'm only gonna do a half cage, but that requires a lot of planning, a lot of research, and uh, I'm gonna be doing that um, in parallel. Um, at least it's on the inside, and um, most of that fabrication is done away from the car. So this is something to look forward to as well. So welding is not done, but the, um, for me, some of the, 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 the pressing um, items are, are now done.